This is Alberta Hemsley of Withrow International High School in Cincinnati, Ohio. Today we're going to look at area. Area is the measurement of flat surfaces in some kind of unit squared. Area can actually be squared or it could be like tiles on a floor that are rectangular or it could be any geometric shape like the area of a surface of a penny. Today we're going to limit ourselves to flat surfaces that can actually be measured and we will not be talking about any irregular shapes. In life you will need to know area in figuring wall area for painting or floor area for carpeting. Probably you will be using units like square feet or square yards. In this class, we will work primarily in units called centimeters squared or square centimeters. We will get there by measuring in centimeters to do decimals. Then we measure this little rectangle to two decimals in the next direction. The centimeters times centimeters is always going to be centimeters squared. In this case, our little flat surface multiplies out to be 38 point something with a decimal and it's going to wind up being 38 with two decimals and centimeters squared. It will never matter which side you called length, which side you called width. When you multiply your two centimeter sides together, you will get centimeters squared. The answer will be the same either way. That brings us to rounding. When we multiply numbers with decimals, we often wind up with whole bunches of decimals. I'd like you to look at this number that has many decimals. It doesn't really matter how many decimals. But let's look at this number. I would like you to find the third decimal place with the five. When we are using rulers that measure to two decimal places, our answer will also have two decimal places. So we will look to that third decimal place to find out what our last decimal will be. In this case, because the five is five or greater, we use the same rounding rules of math and the nine will go up to a zero, the eight becomes a nine. And our number that had many decimals rounds to two decimals to 2.90. Let's round pi. Here pi is taken out to many decimal places and let's find pi to two decimal places. When we do that we're going to look for the third decimal place and the third decimal place here is one so it rounds to 3.14. If a number like pi had the third decimal being five or greater, then the number will be different. It will round differently. The four will round up in this case. And our rounded number winds up being 3.15. Let's round this number to two decimal places. Because the third decimal is less than 5, it will round to 12.12. .12. If the third decimal is more than 5, then it rounds to 12.13. Here is an interesting case. I've told you that I want the answer in two decimals, but this one only has one. What do we do? Well, we've got to make it two decimals. And we make it two decimals by adding the zero. Now we have an answer with two decimals. What happens when you have a number that has no decimals and you're supposed to have an answer with two decimals? Well, you need to make the two decimals happen. 
you make the two decimals happen by adding two zeros. So our answer would be 12.00. Let's find the area of something a little more complicated, the surface of a penny. We measure the penny very carefully and find its diameter. The surface of a penny is a circle and going back to math, we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. We just need to find r. We know pi. From math, we know that the radius is half of the diameter. If we measure the diameter of the penny, then we can figure out the radius. Here we're going to measure the diameter as 1.92 centimeters. Half of 1.92 is 0.96. We square 0.96 centimeters, and that's 0.96 centimeters times 0.96 centimeters, and that gives us 0.9216 centimeters squared. Using the pi that we have in our calculator, we multiply that times r squared, and we come out with this lum number with a very great number of decimals. We need to round it. To round, we know that we need to wind up with two decimals, so we look to the third decimal, and sure enough, that third decimal is the 5, and we need to round it, and it goes to 2.90 centimeters squared. 2.90 centimeters squared. What does that mean? Let's see if we can figure that out. Here we have three little one centimeter squared cubes. That would be 3.0 centimeters squared. The surfaces of three centimeters cubed would be three centimeters squared. 2.90 would be just a little bit less than that. Does it seem to work? It does seem to work. 2.90 centimeters squared for the surface of the penny seems to be a little bit less than 3.0 centimeters squared. Let's review. Area is the measurement of space of a flat surface. We will measure in centimeters for the most part, we will measure to two decimals. For regular surfaces, we will measure length times width, but it doesn't matter which side is the length and which side is the width. In multiplying decimals, we will often wind up with more than two decimals, but our answer must be in two decimals only, so we need to round. We look to the third decimal and if the third decimal is greater than 5, we round up. If it's less than 5, the number stays the same. Our units, for the most part, will be centimeters. When we multiply centimeters times centimeters, we get units called centimeters squared or squared centimeters. This is area. Enjoy!